Good morning. My name is Scott Brother, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome back. I hope everyone had a great uh, Christmas week. Um, it is now Monday, the week before um, we start uh, trading in 2016. I think we have four sessions left. I remember on Wednesday I was saying, <laughs> do not be buying for a Christmas rally Wednesday for Thursday that some things were probably priced in when the S&P went from Monday around, you know, what, 2000 up right into resistance at 2064. So hopefully some of you guys trimmed and only trailed a small portion of whatever it is you were holding based on the fact of that type of move. Um, the question now is, you know, what type of action do we have this week as we close out the year as most indices are, you know, close to flat, you know, some up a little bit, some down a little bit, or maybe a whole lot of nothing this week. So, so far to start the week, you know, Asia was a bit softer with Europe. I'll take a quick look here at the FXI just to see why I haven't heard much about Asia, because Asia has been pretty quiet ever since this big move lower and then the bounce back, you know, it basically has been caught in this descending channel here. Okay, so, you know, when there's not a lot of volatility, you know, you don't hear a lot of, about it on TV. So at this point, it's still below all the moving averages. So I would say, you know, Asia itself or these indices still have a heck of a lot to prove. If you want to take a close look here, if you are trading the FXI, you know, I would say it has to hold this. Otherwise, you'll start hearing about it again. So brushing up against the descending channel, you know, you would think that if, uh, you know, we want to start strong into the new year, you know, coming out of this region, that perhaps it takes out this spot. This is uh, 3650, but if all of a sudden we start to break and close this gap, you know, it can continue in this descending channel even further. As far as Europe, um, still looks <laughs> like not much going on there. This HEDJ has been a disaster, especially considering what just went on with the U.S. dollar. Um, it's supposed to be a proxy for Germany. And uh, you have all these lower highs in place, and then it broke the 200 day, and it's been below the 200 day pretty much for all of uh, the holiday season starting you know, from Thanksgiving. Um, still hasn't made new lows, so I guess you don't hear too much about it, but still not acting well, okay? Um, at this point, uh, I think this is your pivot here coming across, which is um, you know, almost in, what, what's this? Let me see what this price is for you. Um, this price, let's get a little bit of a, of a focus. And my eyes are actually getting old, so I actually need to focus on it too. So maybe that's helping you. you know, so you have one level here at um, 54.21. And then really, you know, you'll start hearing about this if it starts to break below 50, you know, 53-ish. And that's a big level going sideways. This will be a big level that we look at to start the year. And then, uh, and then there's a huge gap. So I mentioned before, Santa Claus came a week ago on Monday and then messed with people on Thursday, and that's when you had that small little RDR in the spiders in the last, basically the, the, the rally started in the, in the last 15 minutes of Monday and, and ended the last 15 minutes of Thursday. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You know, if you remember last week coming in, you know, the SPX all of a sudden on that Monday had its, uh, held this uh, support that we were talking about going sideways. It held above 2000, gave you a decent close. Then you had that buy program above 2026, and then basically came into this resistance here and did a small red dog reversal around this pivot. This is why we have pivots. This was 2064, pushed up three handles to 2067, right into the upper end of the range. And now I guess, you know, what you want to do is you want to see, you know, can it hold higher? What's going to happen this week? Are we just going to fall back down to, you know, to the, the lower end of the range? Or are we going to show some commitment going sideways to tighten things up into the end of the year. If that's the case, you would think this 2040 is pretty big. I would say 2040 would be very you know, bullish or constructive to hold uh, for this week. We might even see it today, but a close below this um, today, then all of a sudden starts to you know, bring back the, the range trading. And then you have um, you know, another, I guess, level here, which would be you know, at this point, you know, it would almost be like, you know, rally off, and that's at 225. So 242-ish, 225-ish. If you want to see where that gap is of the spiders from Wednesday, um, I'm sure a lot of us are going to be looking at that uh, today. I think some people in the VTF already said they started to, you know, nibble a little bit here. Okay, this spot right now on the, on the spiders, this low here is 204.58. Okay, if it gets in there, you have a whole gap all the way down to here, which uh, is 203. Um, 85. So write this down. I would think, you know, I thought maybe if the bulls had full control, it would hold this gap. Maybe it does a red dog reversal with this pivot. So it breaks below, comes back above. 
but I would say a close into this gap near the lows of the day, and you're going to probably see some active guys start to get a little bit, um, just a little bit more patient and a little bit more hands off because that means, uh, you know, maybe this was just meant for everyone to have a, a decent Christmas where, you know, uh, the headlines look better than the actual action. But all in all, I did put a chart up there talking about how this would be a spot to sell or at least hedge some longs, and hopefully you did so. And now we'll see if this, um, this gap area holds. Um, you know, most indices all look the same. You know, the Russell, you know, rallied into a lower high. The bios rallied into a lower high. Um, technology, if you look real quickly at the Qs, um, you know, at this point rallied right into resistance. So I would say, you know, you want to see if there's um, relative strength here. I would take a look like this. You have the low at a 112.16. If it could hold above that, that would show a little bit of um, constructive bullishness. Um, if not, you know, then it's just coming right back down. And I guess you could do support one, support two, support three. This would be your next spot. And then obviously this is the, the major floor. But I think this floor won't come into, a, um, into play until next week. You know, this week we see if we could hang around. And then I think next week we'll figure out, you know, what direction we start 2016. Do we take this out to the upside or do we take this out to the downside? Or do we stay in this crazy range, which has been horrendous, but hopefully, you know, that won't happen. So we'll get one way or another, which I think will happen, you know, as we get through the first week of January. But as, as of now, you had your four-day move into Santa Claus, and now, you know, support one is uh, 112.16. See if that holds. That doesn't hold support two. Um, you know, what gave a lot of people concern last week was the, the rally was really the dash for trash. You know, the, all the commodities kind of bounced. Oil bounced. The XLE bounced. The OHs bounced. A lot of those names all bounced. And even the ones that have been absolutely annihilated, you know, we're up 5 to 7%, they've, but they've been down 80% in the last year or two. So, you know, with that being said, it put uh, the, the rally in jeopardy besides the fact that the quality names were pretty much out of play, like those FANG names, just there was no attention. The market went 50 handles and those stocks went sideways. So I think that's going to be important to see this week. Go real quickly to oil. You know, um, at this point, you didn't have the same type of move you had here. Remember how potent this move was, you know, boom, that was a potent move and then it did a whole lot of nothing. This one wasn't even as potent. Um, but it did rally some of those names off the lows. So at this point, if you look here at the USO real close, um, you know, I would say um, anything below uh, this would, would definitely get some guys thinking that that was, that was all there is. And this comes, this is actually 11-ish. So maybe give it even a little bit more room. You have the high here of uh, 1088, small gap. So I would say this 1090, you know, if you sold some strength, maybe think about um, buying a dip here, um, but if this spot doesn't hold, you know, then again, just another lower high below the 21 day to be sold. You go to the XLE, the XLE had a feisty little move off those lows also. You know, I remember on the VTF, um, we had decent little buyers here on this day and then sold into strength and then you had your little red dog reversal um, on, on Thursday and now you want to see, you know, can this gap hold? Can this, can this basic support area hold? to show some kind of commitment and maybe build a right shoulder here of like a left shoulder, uh, head, right shoulder, an inverse head and shoulders pattern. So I would say right down, you know, 60-50, that would be a spot that if the Bulls want to have any kind of commitment should hold. Um, because if you put it in perspective, where, where this thing just bounced to, a whole lot of nothing, okay? This thing has been in a crazy downtrend. Look how long it's been below the 200-day broken, as broken could be. And all it did is do a small overthrow low, and you had a little bit of a bounce, and that's what everyone was hyping up. And meanwhile, it was just so far a tactical trade, and you'll see if there's more than that. So if there's going to be more than that, um, it definitely has to prove itself. And the way it proves itself is maybe by holding this little spot here around 60, 60, 50, you know, in the next session or so. So that takes us back to the, the go-to names, the ones that were all quiet last week. You know, um, Google was on the front cover of Barron's. Um, talking about YouTube on how, um, how great it is for the company and how much revenue could produce and earnings to the bottom line. So we'll see what that means today for Google. You know, it has been very tight. It's been a winner this year. Um, going sideways, you know, you want to put a, a big support here. Actually, you know what? Maybe even more micro. You go to the, this is the 50 day. So coming even before that article is going to say, you know, for Google to, to continue to hold this unbelievable trend to the upside, you would think the 50 day holds. Okay, that 50-day I think is something like uh, you know 750-ish. Okay, and if uh, they're going to come mark these up this week, 
or take them in the first week of January, there are two spots that has to happen. And the first one is right here, okay, and that is um, 771. So a, a move and close above that, perhaps people think they're going to miss out, but you know, um, this is your support to the downside, and we'll see if Barron's has any clout. Usually, they, they call out stocks near the bottoms of the ranges that can go lower, and they typically do that at the high end of the ranges. So nothing against them, I'm just saying. Um, they did go against Netflix, and they said how much YouTube is, you know, much more powerful than Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. Or you could read the article. I'm not, I don't want to quote them exactly. All I know is that Netflix has lost some momentum. Here is your wide-range bar that basically negated the fact of it breaking out, and then it never took back more than half of that right there. Then you had a lower high, and, um, and now I would say just be careful here. You know, if this, this held the 50-day last time, it was here, and if it doesn't do it this time, you know, you might see some shorts get aggressive. The low here is a 114.86. If you're still long it, use that as a stop. If you're looking to see or catch a short, you're thinking that these names get sold, that this is, could be a pivot to short at 114.86. You know, stock still has come a, a heck of a long way. Okay, and at this point, you know, you can see how tight it is right here. So just, um, you know, make sure that, you know, just not buying a dip that turns into something bigger because if this 114 breaks, you could see downside. And if you're looking for a short, this has been relatively weaker in, in that group. Um, as far as, you know, BABA, you know, that 85 was a huge level, still couldn't get above it. And with um, the Asia weakness overnight, it's down a little bit. So, you know, you look at this chart and you look how <laughs> momentum doesn't happen anymore, <laughs> anywhere, usually, <laughs> for some reason. So this never broke through 85. Maybe it needs, you know, a new year. You know, we've been talking about the potential of this um, either inverse head and shoulders pattern or some would say that this could be, you know, a cup and handle pattern with this being a high level handle. So you probably need heavy, heavy, crazy volume to break through it. So who would think that it would happen during Christmas? But anyway, um, short term, you know, I think that um, this has to hold. If this area doesn't hold, I, you know, guys like me who have been trying to target this for a breakout, I'll probably say I'll keep the options, which are the third week of January, and just get out of the way. Um, some guys might even look to short this. So, you know, getting in close in here, I, I would, I'm hoping that this 82 area holds. If it doesn't, then it's the same friggin' old Baba and just get out of the way and maybe revisit next year. Um, Apple, you had to be a, a surgeon to make any money there last week. I talked about if it maybe could bounce back to 109, 110 if they wanted to, you know, have a bid in the S&P for Santa. And that's pretty much what it did. And then reversed on, on Thursday saying, that's it. Overall, I, <laughs> this pattern still is pretty, pretty darn bearish. Okay, below every moving average. You know, you could see this rounding top or head and shoulders top you know, and um, at this point, still below this trend line where most uh, active guys would have got out or got short. Um, it's still, you know, you want to see more macro support. It's coming in right there. But um, let's take a close look here. At this point, it's still not healthy. Okay, I talk about things being healthy when they're above the 8-day, the 21-day, the 200-day, et cetera, et cetera. This is below everything. Okay, so if uh, we're going to get weak and they want to sell something, you better be careful being long this thing just because its name is Apple. But anyway, um, this was a small reversal. You have 107.20s support, and then this 105.50 is big. And if you know if this truly is a head and shoulders top type pattern here, um, you know with this you could even say you know you, you could draw the neckline many different ways. If you draw it like this way, you know, kind of like this, you would say that as long as it stays below this 111-ish, you better be careful because from you know, 130 to one to say 110, that's 20 points. That gets you a move down to here, back down to the, those flash crash, crash, flash crash lows, which wouldn't be good, I think, for the overall market and or for Apple holders. And again, if you just follow the rules, once it broke below the moving averages here, you were done with it, or once it broke below the 200 day around 115, that's basically when I got a mine when I was actually getting better from uh, my surgery. So if I could call up trade support and see Apple breaking, you know, support in the, in the 200 day and all those moving averages, I think you could have pressed your keys also if that's the case. So we'll see what happens here, you know, during this week for Apple. Um, and social, there's not a heck of a lot going out, you know, on out there. Uh, Facebook, uh, again, has had a huge, huge run. And um, above all the moving averages, a little different, getting really tight. So the question is, you know, what's next here for Facebook coming into this week or let's come, or maybe you know January I think or today if you're just dealing with today at this point it's very very tight okay you could draw this chart and um, 
Let me get my trusty line so I can draw it for you. you know, without that little overthrow, that's your resistance. And then you can almost draw you know, a pretty well-defined support right there. And there's your 50-day. So if this were to break and close below 104 half, I think some guys will probably sell it and some might even short it. So this is a very big level here. So we'll see which direction it kind of wants to pick or continues to go sideways, but I haven't seen this get so tight in a while. So this can give us clues that last week it was just out of play, you know, or was it a precursor that the market goes 50 handles, Facebook doesn't lead the way, maybe it goes lower. So above 106, maybe a little markup. Below this 104.50, got to be a little careful because then your next support doesn't come in until this 101.50. So, you know, a lot of things to watch there. I'll probably be focused on Facebook today because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to want to deal with the, the loose and wideness of a Google or an Amazon so Facebook, I feel like, you know, could be a good representation on how to make money if, if they hold or not. You know, if you see Netflix break 114.5 and Facebook break um, 104.50 and this and that, you know that the FANG stocks are not being bid for and you better be a little bit more careful. And then we'll figure out, you know, what, what the next steps there are. Um, like I said, the dash for trash was oil last week and oil um, is off this morning. See if those levels I gave you before hold, you know, the metals kind of been hanging around. I actually bought the GLDs, which I haven't bought this friggin' GLDs in a long time. I bought it on, uh, on Thursday, thinking perhaps, um, you know, you're seeing a little commitment to this move off the lows, thinking that maybe it could trade above here and give you a move to 105. And now they're off a little bit this morning. My stop's going to be uh, this low here, which is up 102.20. It breaks and closes below this. I'm done. You know, this has done this way too many times this year. And I was thinking maybe seasonality, et cetera, et cetera, get a little bit of a lift, fill this gap, trying to be a little cute. But as of right now, it's off a little bit this morning. We'll see if it can go green and, and do something there. If not, you know, same old story with the metals. You know, after every bounce, it's been sold and there's been no traction. So I guess why should this time be different? But we shall see. So in closing, you know, this is probably one of the lightest volume weeks of the year. Um, last week, you did see a targeted Santa move from Monday that went into Wednesday and then Thursday, boom. Red Dog Reversal kind of ended it on Thursday, or it was just it was the holiday, and, and that's that. And now we'll see, you know, what the market's made out of. If you look at the spiders, I showed you where the gap is. You know, that um, 203.50 to 204, if the market's any good, that's probably where it should hold. That's probably where I'll look to bid the first time it gets there, or to see if we get a 15-minute low versus that low. Maybe I'll buy something to see if it could hold, you know, probably the spiders. And if it can't and it breaks it, I'll just get out of the way and, you know, figure out that maybe I should be, you know, at the Atlantis with Sperling and versus here, uh, the only one on the boat on the way to the city trying to figure out what's next. But anyway, I have to be here anyway. We're working on, by the way, um, the 2016 report. It's just about done. You should see, uh, you know, some information about it. It will be delivered Thursday night, and uh, we'll talk more about that, and I'll give you some clues, you know, on, on Twitter about how to uh, get access to it, etc. Have a great day trading if you're here. Don't do too much, and I'll see you at the recap.